is ready to go with all sorts of news for you. So if you wouldn't mind just taking your seats, please. Uh, this is for you. Uh, oh. Why just leave it there? That's good. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, if I can now have your attention, please. We are ready to resume. I want to say uh, welcome back. I hope that you had uh, a good break. I hope that you had a chance to look at the trade show. We have 220 vendors participating this year, and I hope that you've had a chance to find some things that are of particular interest to your municipality. This morning we have the privilege of having the Premier here with us, and it brings back memories of a year ago at the SUMA convention. I believe it was four days after the Premier was sworn in as Premier, he came to the SUMA convention in Regina. And that impressed me greatly. Four days after taking office, he was prepared to come and speak to us. And I think that tells you how important or how important he thinks we are, uh, how important we are to the whole functioning of this province. Our board of members are 439 member municipalities. We are representing 80% of the population of Saskatchewan. And so this is very important for us to be able to have the Premier come and address us. It's very important as well to see that he shares the value in relationship between the government of Saskatchewan and SUMA. And we are looking forward to the return of Cabinet on Wednesday for the Bear Pit session. Thank you for also the consultations that we've had throughout the year. And I haven't seen Minister Keating here but yet, but uh, uh, Minister Keating, uh, there he is. Uh, has been excellent as well, Premier, in terms of consultations with us, with us throughout the year. So without further ado, please give a warm welcome to the Premier of Saskatchewan, Scott Moe. Well, thank you very much, Gordon, and, uh, and welcome, everyone. Welcome to the SUMA executive, uh, SUMA staff, delegates, distinguished guests, uh, ladies and gentlemen from across the province. Good morning. Good morning on a, uh, a brisk winter day in Saskatoon. As Gordon said, uh, four days after um, I was uh, sworn in as Premier last year, I had the opportunity to address uh, this, the SUMA delegates, and, and it's a great honour for me to have uh, that opportunity again this year. I want to acknowledge, uh, we do have a, a couple of MPs, federal MPs in the crowd here today and I want to acknowledge them and I want to acknowledge my legislative colleagues that are here today. I see a couple table, tablefuls full of them up at the front. Um, I have the opportunity as uh, your leader of this province to work with what I believe to be the strongest caucus in the nation. I work with uh, your representatives. Uh, they are very, very strong at representing your views in our caucus and they are, as I said, the strongest team in the nation and I'm very proud to show up and work with them each and every day. So thank you to my colleagues for what you bring to the table uh, each and every day beha on behalf of the communities in this room. We're looking forward to a good discussion uh, here this morning and over the next couple of days as I'm sure you, on, and as, as I'm sure you are and as uh, Gordon said, um, Cabinet will be back for the Bear Pit on Wednesday which is Always a lot of fun, at least for some of you in the room. <laughs> but most certainly, I, I would say this on behalf of my, my colleagues, uh, the Bear Pit Session um, is a great opportunity for us. It's an opportunity for us to, to uh, hear directly from main streets right across, in communities right across this province. It's a great uh, opportunity for us to hear that unfiltered message and to continue uh, with the strong relationship and the partnership that we have. 
And ladies and gentlemen, we do have a strong partnership, as Gordon mentioned, a partnership that is grounded in, in a common commitment to serving the people of, of Saskatchewan, a partnership that is informed by, by shared experiences. And in our caucus, we have former mayors. We have a former deputy mayor. We have, we have many former, former councillors, such as Erica Lawson and Gordon Wyant. We, have, uh, we had the late Kevin Phillips who served very capably as the mayor of Melfort and later went on to serve as the member of the Legislative Assembly for that community. We have our health minister, Jim Ryder, who, who was a municipal administrator for many years. And Jim, is, Jim was, uh, he was excellent at his job. He tells me that all the time. <laughs> and I think Don Morgan has also requested in caucus that we address him as uh, his worship, even though he has never served as a mayor anywhere, not even in his own home. But the point I, I am making is uh, that within our government there is an understanding of the issues that, that you are dealing with in, in, your, in your council chambers and there's a deep appreciation of the time and the energy, energy that you commit to serving your communities with, without often much fanfare and without often much acclaim. So it's only appropriate to take a minute to say how thankful we are for your steadfast and effective leadership in this province. And that often isn't just dealing with routine matters that may come to your table or contentious issues that, that come your way, but we're also grateful for the inspirational leadership that you provide in, in times of trouble or times of, of challenge. You know, during natural disasters that I can think uh, just a few years ago, Due to natural, or during uh, times of natural disasters, due to extreme weather, you've been on the front lines dealing with the immediate impact to, to the citizens that you serve and we serve. And, and last March, in the aftermath of what was the most horrible accident involving our humble Broncos, we saw inspirational leadership once again. We saw Rare Mayor uh, Rob Munch, his fellow councillors, and the staff at the city of Humboldt. They stood so very tall during during this terrible crisis. They were humbled strong in, in every respect. And they were supported by the people in this room, as well as colleagues from across the province and, uh, and across the country. And so today, to all of those involved, I want to acknowledge your leadership, I want to acknowledge your service, and I want to convey the heartfelt gratitude of the entire province. Thank you so very much. Folks, this morning I plan to update you on where things stand in, in our province of Saskatchewan from, from our perspective of, of the provincial government. I want to offer some insight on what you might expect to see in the days ahead, and that includes what you may see in the upcoming provincial budget this spring. It's hard to believe, but as Gordon said, it was just a year ago at this convention that I made my first major speech as a, as a new Premier. And I said then that Traveling through the province during the months that led up to that has reaffirmed my faith in, in the strength of, of Saskatchewan communities and, and in, in the strength of Saskatchewan people. And a year on this job has only deepened my conviction that we are truly blessed to call this province, to call Saskatchewan our home. Today there are so many reasons for us to be, to be optimistic about the future of this province. Beginning with our population which continues to grow, even during what is sometimes considered challenging times. Right now, there are more than 1,165,000 people in this province, a record. Our population has grown for 50 consecutive quarters. This is the longest sustained period of growth since they started keeping records in 1971. You in this room are part of this. And it's incumbent on each of us, it's incumbent on all of us serving at every level of government to ensure that our province continues to move forward, continues to progress, and continues to grow to provide opportunity for everyone. People are coming to this province today because there is opportunity in our Saskatchewan communities. Opportunities for a career in your community. Opportunities for people to build a life right here with their family, possibly 
in the community where they were raised. Our economy has proven resilient despite some challenging times. We've come through what we hope is the worst of the downturn that was caused in many ways by a, by a steep drop-off in natural resource prices. And while we still face some significant challenges, some economic challenges and some major headwinds, and I'll speak about those in a moment, there are some encouraging signs. For instance, we've added 11,000 jobs in the most recent Stats Can report. Most of those are full-time jobs. We've seen strong manufacturing and wholesale trade numbers. For the first 11 months of 2018, our exports were up 11% over 2017, up 11% over the year previous. These are exports that are the source of wealth in our communities. Agricultural exports are still near historical highs despite a tough growing season and even tougher time getting that crop off, despite some ongoing trade difficulties that we may have. Here's another reason for us to be optimistic. In Saskatoon and elsewhere in this province, there are young, ambitious, energetic entrepreneurs that are doing quite literally amazing things. They're busy building the economy of the future, the economy that will drive the growth of this province for quite likely the next 50 years and beyond. And you may have seen the recent media coverage of a company called Seven Shifts, based right here in Saskatoon. Seven Shifts makes employee scheduling software for restaurants, software that is now being used in in over 10,000 restaurants all around the world. Seven Shifts just raised another $13.3 million. The company employs 80 people and expects to hire another 40 this year. And that's just one company among so very many that are leading our, our province. Saskatoon is the second fastest growing tech hub in the countryside outside of the Waterloo area second fastest growing in the nation. And our government is supporting this sector through initiatives like Colabs, the province's first technology incubator right here in Saskatoon, and the Saskatchewan Technology Startup Incentive. This is the latest chapter in an innovation story that began so many decades ago. We all know that our province has been a world leader in the development and the production of, of agricultural machinery. Companies like Honeybee, like Morris, Depker Industries, Seedhawk, Schulte, all global players in their own right, headquartered for the most, most part right here in small town Saskatchewan. We're world leaders when it comes to crop science and ag biotech. We're world leaders in clean energy research. And our food processing industry is coming on very strong. Today, Saskatchewan's economy is more diversified than ever because of our capacity to innovate. And we have momentum on our side, thanks to the growth that we've experienced over the course of the past decade. Growth that has allowed our government to make record investments in your community, record investments in highways, in healthcare, in education, in infrastructure, both provincial and municipal, and in municipal revenue sharing, which would be of no interest to anyone in this room, <laughs> especially your president. Ladies and gentlemen, revenue sharing has grown significantly over the course of the past decade. In fact, since 2007, it's up 89%. That's for the province as a whole, 89%. But many communities have seen the revenue sharing more than double since 2007, and that is due to the population growth that we've been experiencing. For example, in Saskatoon, it's up 144%. Swift Current is up 123%. And Melford is up 131%, a good story in itself. There is no other sector in Saskatchewan that has seen provincial funding, in, a provincial funding increase at this rate over this period of time. Last year, four days after I was sworn in as Premier, we had that comfortable discussion about freezing revenue sharing at $241 million while we worked with you as a partner to revise the formula. The changes that we had announced in the year previous to the PST in 2017 meant the formula had to be, had to be redeveloped. It had to be modified. We had a formula that was predictable and transparent, and those were words that we talked about over the years 
of the implementation of the original revenue sharing formula. These were the fundamental qualities that all parties involved in the discussion wanted to preserve, wanted so dearly to preserve. And today I'm pleased to announce that the new revenue sharing formula for the province of Saskatchewan, a revenue sharing formula that retains those crucial qualities of predictability and transparency, transparency and it will be sustainable into the future. Under the new formula, revenue sharing will be based on a value of three quarters of one percent, three quarters of one point, pardon me, of the PST. That's 75 percent of one point of the PST. This means with the changes that were made in the coming fiscal year, revenue sharing will rise by $10 million to $251 million next year. That's about a 4% increase. And you are well represented at those discussion tables at our caucus table by your MLA. But that is about a 4% increase. Municipalities will continue to have the ability to use revenue sharing to address the priorities as you see fit. And I want to thank you. I want to thank each of you and through you to your councils for your patience as we work to adapt this revenue sharing, for, uh, this revenue sharing formula to these new circumstances. And I think it's fair to say that the fact that we were able to sit down and reconfigure this formula that had worked so well without getting bogged down in acrimony speaks to the strength of the partnership between the provincial government and SUMA and SARM. Both parties wanted certainty and that's what we have moving forward today. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm also announcing this morning that the provincial budget will be released on March the 20th and it will be a balanced budget. In 2017, we put forward a three-year plan to reduce our dependency on resource revenue and to balance our provincial budget. Well, this spring is that third year. That plan to balance remains on track and we'll be introducing that balanced budget this spring to reach those goals. We did have to make some, some very challenging decisions. We had to control our spending. We had to control our investment. And that effort continues into this budget year. This budget will also, as I said, see municipalities get a 4.4% lift in their revenue sharing formula. Many organizations are not going to see a similar boost in their funding from the province this year. Make no mistake, this will be another tight budget. We need to be disciplined. We need to ensure that we have the fiscal capacity to provide the services and programs that the people of Saskatchewan value, the services and programs that we have been able to experience over the course of the last number of years so that we can have those programs and services not just today, not just tomorrow, but so we can still have those services in our, for our children's generation. Deficits erode that capacity, deficits erode that opportunity over time and that's why we need to balance the budget and the sooner we do it the better and it's going to happen this spring. The budget will provide more detail as well on our infrastructure investment. As you know, we signed on to the federal government's tripartite investing in Canada program recently. There will be four envelopes that will be available for municipal projects and provincial projects. The first will be our urban public transit envelope. The second will be a green infrastructure envelope. The third will be the community culture and recreation infrastructure. And the last, the fourth envelope will be the rural and northern communities envelope. We look forward to working with, with your councils across this province on the initiatives, the important infrastructure initiatives in the coming months, as infrastructure remains a key priority for all of us. We have invested since 2008 $12.5 billion in, in it, just in executive government. That includes a $1.6 billion investment in, uh, in municipal infrastructure whether it's roads, sewer, water, water treatment plants, recreational centers, whether it's bridges, schools, or hospitals, our government has made major commitments in infrastructure in your community, often in partnership with you. A commitment that includes investment like the, like the Jim Pattison Children's Hospital opening later this year right here in Saskatoon, a provincial hospital in every aspect. The state-of-the-art children's hospital is finally in our province, a hospital that will serve a hub of, 
a hub of clinical best practices and learning for professionals, a, ho a, a hospital that will truly serve families of Saskatchewan, families that we want to recruit and retain into our province, a hospital that will help us recruit and ret retain the very best pediatric and maternal health care specialists in the nation. Our commitment to infrastructure includes the Regina Bypass, soon to be completed, on time and on budget, the largest infrastructure project in provincial history. A project that will ensure safer access in and out of our province's capital city by, yes, transport trucks, but also by vehicles carrying our families. Safer access. We have a new Saskatchewan hospital in North Battleford that will be opening this spring. We have a new hospital in Moose Jaw. We have long-term care facilities across this province. We have new arenas and recreational centers across this province. And our Crown Corporations continue to invest, continue to invest in a rural cellular and data outbuild. $16.5 billion have been invested over the last 11 years to ensure that our power and our communications are solid. Ladies and gentlemen, we continue to invest to this extent because Saskatchewan, we believe, has every opportunity to continue to, gr to grow. The potential of our communities, our people, and our province is enormous. I mentioned our entrepreneurs earlier, our incredible capacity to innovate in our industries. You know about the resources that we have in this province, potash, uranium, oil, timber, in quantities that that inspire everyone all around the world. You're aware of our, our agricultural producers and our urban agricultural industry, our ag research, re researchers right here in Saskatoon or in Melfort, our ag equipment technicians in your communities across the province, our professional agronomists, our manufacturing employees. These people are the very best at what they do. Saskatchewan is quite literally feeding the world. But I also said the industries that we rely on, the industries that are producing very efficiently and very sustainably, the food, fuel, and fertilizer for the world, they're facing some headwinds. There are some obstacles in our path as we look forward. The very first of those, obviously, is, is we have lower resource prices than what we've been used to in years gone by. Lower prices that are now starting to show the, the very first signs of strength. But we have some other obstacles. We have a federal government that is placing obstacles in, in the path of the success of these industries. This is the uncomfortable reality that, quite frankly, we are faced with today. My friends, at this time when our economy is recovering, our our lower natural resources are starting to recover, but yet still fragile, at a time when our energy sector is, is just beginning to get back on its feet, at a time when our, our mining industry is dealing with lower but slowly recovering prices, at a time when our manufacturers are facing uncertainty caused by, by American steel tariffs, the federal government is choosing to impose a carbon tax on the people of Canada. A carbon tax that will destroy jobs, discourage investment, it will inflict higher costs on industry and families, and it will do absolutely nothing, absolutely nothing to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. In British Columbia, for example, <laughs> British Columbia, they have a $35 a ton carbon tax, and emissions have went up 4.1% since it was introduced. When I attended this convention a year ago, Saskatchewan was alone in our opposition to this, to this ineffective, harmful tax. But today, in Ontario, in New Brunswick, in Manitoba, and perhaps very shortly in Alberta, there is a growing consensus that this federal tax is destructive, it's ineffective, and it is absolutely unnecessary. In our province, we have our own climate change plan. It's a plan of prairie resilience. It's a plan that will result in actual emissions reductions without harming our economy, our resource-based economy. My friends, we will not back down in our opposition to this federal carbon tax and will be in court uh, shortly asking for our reference opinion. 
Nor will we relent in our position on Bill C-69, the federal government's No More Pipelines Bill. Bill C-69 creates unnecessary barriers to development of our industries without making any meaningful improvements to the environmental review process. It moves the, re the review process away from something that is, that is science-based and factual to something much more nebulous, if you will, such as the impact on the intersection, inter intersection of sex, gender, and other identity factors. And if you don't understand quite what that means, no one does. <laughs> the conversation about Bill C-69, make, make no bones about this, the conversation about Bill C-69 has effectively killed energy, the Energy East pipeline. The pipeline that takes sustainable Saskatchewan energy to a new refinery that would be built in New Brunswick. It's now causing the Trans Mountain pipeline to die slowly by strangulation. The project, I would add, that you and I in this room now own what does this mean for our province and communities in our province? Well, it means we don't get world prices for, oil, for the oil that we produce. The sustainable energy products that we produce, we do not receive the world price. That's 400,000 barrels a day that we are selling at a discount, most of it to the United States, as we just have one customer for that product. The price differential is costing our energy sector billions of dollars each year. And it's costing your government directly, our government directly, millions of dollars in revenues through taxes and royalties. Revenues, I would add, that could be invested in highways, in hospitals, and in schools in your communities. And ladies and gentlemen, this isn't Scott Moe's political theater moment. This is, about, this is about workers in Estevan wanting to put food on their table. This is about families in Maidstone that need to make a mortgage payment. This is about young people across this province, some yet to come here, wanting to start a life in your community. This is not political theater, this is real life that we're talking about and it's time that the federal government woke up to this fact that oil, that energy, that gas, that manufacturing, that agriculture, these are Saskatchewan industries that create wealth for the people and communities not only in our province, but across the nation. It is absolutely crucial that we advocate strong, loud and proud for the ongoing strength of these industries and the jobs that they provide in our communities and the opportunity that they provide for families to move to our communities. These are the industries that give us the fiscal capacity to support the programs and infrastructure that we expect in our communities. This includes programs supporting the most vulnerable among us. In closing, I want to take you to, I want to take you to the community of Spiritwood, just west of where I live. In Spiritwood, there's a group home that's run by an incredible organization called Prairie Community Endeavors. I was there when the group home opened in 2012, and what a great day that was. The announcement was part of our government's effort to improve the life for for people living with intellectual disabilities. Since 2007, we've boosted the funding in this area from, from $215 million to $561 million a year, 161% increase, because it's the right thing to do. And we could only do that because our economy was growing. Last April, I had the opportunity to return to Spearwood. We were celebrating the relaunch of the day program at that very group home. There was new washrooms and there was more space for the clients. And the clients really stole the show that day. Greg and, and Shirley and Bradley and Lynn, Alma and Sean. They were pretty happy and they welcomed everyone with open arms. Since then, they've been able to grow their client list. It's expanded to include Ben and, and Samuel and, and Fred. And ladies and gentlemen, it's been said that dignity is essential to human life as water, food, or oxygen. And all of us want, and all of us deserve, to be respected and to be valued. Well, Prairie Community Endeavors has been providing that essential element in the community of Spearwood for more than 20 years now, dignity. 
And there are dozens of other organizations that are doing the very same thing in communities right across Saskatchewan. And when you get down to it, that's what it's all about. Being there for the people that need our help. That's why our communities need to continue to advance. That's why our province needs to continue to advance. And that's why our province must continue to grow. And that's why I will never apologize for standing up for Saskatchewan, because standing up for Saskatchewan is always the right thing to do. Thank you very much, and have a great week at your convention. Here. Thank you very much, uh, Premier Mo, for your inspiring comments. And I think Suma is with you, certainly, in terms of your optimism for this province. You know that none of the people in this room are doing what they're doing for the money. They're doing it because we believe in our communities and in this province. We also want to say thank you to you and to your government for your commitment to the revenue sharing. It is consistent. It is a new formula and we very much appreciate the extra $10 million that's being added. I can say to our membership that we argued long and hard. Uh, Minister Kading perhaps will show a few scars from, uh, from the discussions, but it was a very congenial discussion. Uh, yeah, both the minister and I lost a lot of hair over that. And, uh, but we want to say we very much appreciated that discussion because we always felt that you were there to listen. We didn't get all that we had asked for, but I can tell you that we're very appreciative of what we have, and we look forward to years ahead when it will grow even more. We also welcome the idea that the infrastructure grants, federal, provincial, and municipal, will be continuing. That is badly needed money in terms of sewer, water, the whole landfill issue. Many of these communities across this room are suffering, and we welcome that program very much. And finally, I can say to you, Premier, that SUMA has in the past passed resolutions in support of the stance on natural resources and pipelines, and we wish you well in that struggle, and we also say thank you for consulting with us. Thank you again, Premier, for being with us today, and we look forward to working with you in the days and months ahead. And it's now my privilege to recognize uh, this event by donating to the Mike Badham Scholarship Fund. Mike Badham was a educator, a principal, a uh, member of city council here in Regina, and he was on the SUMA board. And we make dedication, uh, uh, donations to that fund uh, when speakers come to address us, and it goes towards the Faculty of Education at the University of Regina. So thank you once again. It shows your honesty, your dedication, and your passion for this province, and we say thank you. I'll now turn the microphone over to Randy Donauer, as the Premier and I have to slip away to talk to the media, who always share what we say with everybody else. I don't know why they do that, but uh, thank you. Well, now we are in for a very impressive treat. There are a few people that can, that can uh, speak as eloquently as the Premier, but I think our next speaker will probably give him a run for his money. Today's luncheon is sponsored by In Motion, Saskatchewan In Motion, and we are going to now hear from the young Sydney Lester. Come on up, Sydney. Let's give her a hand, everybody. Welcome. <laughs> Good morning, I'm Sydney, Saskatchewan In Motion's Kid Ambassador. It's good to be here with you again. Community leaders like you are so important to Saskatchewan In Motion's goal, getting more kids more active more often. Last time we met, I told you that Saskatchewan kids aren't active enough, and we don't spend much time outside anymore. With your help, we're working on it, but it hasn't changed much yet. 
I'd like to share a short video that explains why you should care about that and how you can help. When you were a kid, I'll bet you spent most of your time here and here and here. You walked to school, rode your bike to your friend's house, and played outside till the streetlights came on. My generation doesn't do much of that. Most Canadian kids spend only 15 minutes a day out here. You'll almost always find us here or here or here. They say we spend seven to nine hours a day in front of a screen. Hard to believe, but it's a fact. That's the bad news. The good news is that Saskatchewan in Motion has a simple solution. We just need everyone to do their part to make it work. Kids need to move 60 to 90 minutes a day to be healthy and happy, and you can help make that happen. All we need is 30 minutes of physical activity at home, 30 minutes at school, and 30 minutes in the community. That's where you come in. Kids like me need leaders like you to build communities and neighborhoods where we can move and play, to make it easy and safe for us to walk and bike places, and to think about physical activity when you're creating community plans. I know you have a tough job with lots of people counting on you for lots of things. Just remember that the kids are counting on you too, and you're not alone. Saskatchewan in Motion can help. They've already helped lots of communities work together to make it easier for kids to be active. They can help you too. The Go Out and Play Challenge, powered by Saskatchewan Blue Cross, is a great place to start. Each year, Saskatchewan communities compete for the chance to win $10,000 towards a project that helps kids and families play outdoors. Past challenge winners have built play spaces, trails, and active school grounds. All it took was a great idea and rallying people to get active and log their physical activity online. The community that moves the most wins. But whether they win or not, every community that enters benefits by raising awareness, boosting community spirit, and getting more kids more active more often. This year, as an added bonus, Saskatchewan in Motion will work with every community that enters the challenge to help make their dreams a reality. So what are you waiting for? You've got all of this to gain and nothing to lose. Visit saskatchewaninmotion.ca to find out more. I know you got this. It takes all kinds of people to make sure kids can move more, and community leaders play a very important role. Local kids need your help to make sure they have fun, natural places to play, to make sure we can find as much excitement and entertainment outside as we find on our screens. Trust me, it's really what we want. We enlisted the help of Saskatchewan students again this year to show you just how much kids are depending on you. On your table, there's a gift for each of you. It contains a keychain made from a recycled skateboard decorated by a student, along with a handwritten note of encouragement. I hope you'll take it home and keep it as a reminder that kids like me are counting on you. This year's conference theme is Hometown Advantage. Why not make your advantage the fact that your community is a place where it's easy for kids and families to move and play? I know you got this. And don't forget, Saskatchewan in Motion is here to help. Come visit us at booth 21 at the trade show. I'll be there for the next half an hour and Saskatchewan in Motion will be there all day. I know they'd love to chat with you about how they can work with communities like yours to make local plans for kids to get moving more. Thank you for listening. Ladies and gentlemen, the premier of 2032 for the province of Saskatchewan, give her a hand. Thank you so much, Sydney, for coming to talk to us again and, quite frankly, reminding us of what we're all here for. That was very well done. Thank you so much. And please do stop by the trade booth. She's uh, willing to get a selfie done with you, so make sure you stop by for the next half hour and chat with her. We are going to have lunch now. TCU staff is going to be coming around to talk.
call your table to eat and tell you what time it's your turn for your uh, for your table to go eat the SUMA staff in the meantime will be circulating with boxes for you to put your email confirmation card in that I spoke about earlier so if you could fill that out and have it the SUMA staff will circulate the TCU staff are going to call you to lunch we are starting at one o'clock with our sector meeting so please look in your program to see where you should be at one o'clock enjoy your lunch thank you Sydney, Sydney can I